You can see both my dog's tails in the background here. Welcome to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm Mock and give you my views, thoughts, and opinions. Today's mock draft is powered by BetUS. More on them in a little bit. But today, it is coming courtesy of CBS, because oh, CBS, they got the most interesting mock drafts. And it's going to be Ryan Wilson in his mock draft. Let's take a quick look at how the draft order is being decided upon. This is, by the way, the draft order via Tankathon. Tankathon does a great job keeping track of the draft order. But let's go ahead, get into this with pick one. It's going to be the New England Patriots taking Travis Hunter, wide receiver slash corner out of Colorado. This is actually the pick I made in my mock draft. And are they li they're listing him as a corner. So let's read this one real quick. The Patriots need O-line help. Yes. But they need playmakers too. Yes. With Hunter, that means both sides of the football. He would immediately be the most explosive wide receiver on the roster. And the secondary becomes one of the best when you pair him up with Christian Gonzalez. So you are kind of looking at him as a two-way player. I think he's only going to, like, he's going to probably be a mainstay at wide receiver and then work some packages in on the defense just because it's hard to believe that he can play both ways. He can play 120 snaps a game in the NFL. That's just, I don't think, fair that you expect him to do that. But maybe he can. Maybe he can. They even throw at the end. The Patriots can target an offensive line at the top of round two, which is totally true. If you're picking first overall, you want to go ahead and get Bane for your buck. You want to get the best player in this draft. And I think Travis Hunter is that best player in the draft. Cincinnati Bengals at pick two. They go with Mason Graham, defensive interior out of Michigan. I completely agree. This pick should be defensive line. Their defensive line is a ch -ch -ch cheeks. It's not good. They're not getting pass rush. So much so that Coach Lou was like, all right, we're going to have to blitz a ton. And... Even that didn't work this past weekend. The defense ended up being even worse, and they gave up 41 points to the Baltimore Ravens. So added Mason Graham to the interior with his fellow teammate, former teammate, Chris Jenkins, feels hella fun to me. And I think he's probably the best defensive line player in this class. We'll be back to mocking this mock just in a second, but I got to tell you about our friends at BetUS. If you go to BetUS right now and sign up, use a promo code YouTube150, then you'll get a 150% signing bonus on your first deposit up to $2,000. But wait, there's more because your next two deposits will get a 125% signing bonus up to $2,000. It's an utterly ludicrous deal. They're giving you some extra coin to play with. And we like doing our little college football parlays. And this is going to be a hell of a week to do a college football parlay because we got Oregon versus Ohio State in Eugene. So if you want to get in on the action, get in on the action at BetUS. Use promo code YouTube150 when you sign up and you'll get that 150% sign-in bonus on your first deposit and then 125% sign-in bonus on your next two deposits up to $2,000. But as always, Bet responsibly and bet within your means. At pick three, the Jacksonville Jaguars go with Kelvin Banks Jr. Tackle out of Texas. I like this. You, you got Cam Robinson, free agent. Walker Little, free agent. You want to keep your investment safe in Trevor Lawrence. You already paid him. He's no longer on that rookie deal. You, you paid him. So you better keep him protected. How you do that, you invest in the offensive line. Granted, the offensive line has been good the last couple of weeks, but, and I say, but, 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 you can't ignore those free agents at left tackle. For me, Banks is the top tackle in this class. At pick four, the Cleveland Browns go with Jalen Milrow, quarterback out of Alabama. Now, I get it, quarterback for the Browns. Deshaun Watson's been bad. He's been bad. There's no no way to look at it. He is, he is the worst trade in NFL history since the U.S. traded the Merchant of Death for Brittany Griner. The worst trade. Worst trade ever. And you paid. You paid that, that bad trade. Not only did you trade for him and give up significant draft capital, but you paid him fully guaranteed. So you're just going to have to bite the bullet on that. Is this a class where you want to take a quarterback in the top five? Yeah, I don't love it, 
but I feel like the Browns are kind of in a position where they might need to. Uh, the question is, do you shoot for the upside or do you go for the high floor player uh, with Shadur? So you got upside in Milrow, Cam Ward. Then you have Shadur. To me, those are probably the top three. Drew Aller, he's starting to peek his head around the corner like, hey, 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 I'm in this class too. And guess what? I'm big, I can move, and I got a big arm. Yes, you do, Drew Aller. Yes, you do. So quarterback class, it's going to be interesting how it shakes up in the second half of the season. Los Angeles Rams go with Will Campbell, tackle out of LSU. Question is, is he a tackle? Is he a guard? Uh, Alaric Jackson is heading to free agency. That's important to know because he's actually played well since coming off the suspension. The first game wasn't so great. The last two have been pretty solid. So he is going to be a free agent. You're going to wonder, will they pay him? Uh, the offensive line has been beat up. They got guys on IR like uh, Steve Avila and such. The wide receivers are banged up. Uh, this could be a good spot to also take a corner in Will Johnson. So, like, the Rams are kind of in a good spot as they're one of the youngest rosters in the NFL. That happened kind of out of nowhere. So, kind of in a good spot to get a good player. So, I'm kind of fine either or. Carolina Panthers, pick six. They go with Cam Ward, quarterback out of Miami. I don't think the Panthers are done with Bryce Young, and I know that's a hot take. It's just they invested so much to trade up and get him. And I know it's not been great, but I feel like at least given this quarterback class where it's like there's really not a consensus top 10 pick among any of the quarterbacks right now, that you might be willing to wait another year and maybe you give the Bryce Young experience one more shot. Because like, Think about it. Even if he sucks, then you're probably picking in the top 10 again next year. And you're kind of hoping the quarterback class will be better because you're going to have like Nico from Tennessee. You're going to have Arch from Texas. Um, I'm sure some other names will pop up as well. Again, I, I'm i not looking at that class until next summer, so <laughs> we'll get to it. But uh, I like Cam Ward a lot. He, I mean, I'm a Hurricanes fan. I get it. It's just you do worry about a lot of the turnover-worthy plays with him. He has back-to-back -back games with pick sixes. Not ideal. They were terrible throws. It, weren't like, it wasn't like luck pick sixes. It was like, oh, no, these were poor decisions by Cam Ward. So uh, I'm just saying, hey, the big play potential, it's all there. But he's not perfect. Tennessee Titans, they're going to go with Ash and Jet. Oh, 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 <laughs> this is what I'm here for. This is what I'm here for, CBS. Hell yes. Uh, isn't Mike Renner at CBS? Why, has he done a Mike Muck draft on CBS yet? Come on. Come on. Get Mike Renner involved. But Ash and Jetty, what the hell for Tennessee? All right. So quarterback was consideration here. But if the first year head coach... Brian Callahan thinks he can work with second-year quarterback Will Levis. Why not get your young quarterback, arguably the best player in college football? For the last decade or so, running back, run backs were considered fungible? What the hell is that word? Okay, okay, okay. Just talking over my head here with big words. Actually, hold on. Hold on. We're going to define this word. Fungible. I've never heard of it. Meaning, being something such as money or a comedy of such a nature that one part or a quantity may be replaced by another equal part. So replaceable. Replaceable. We could have said replaceable. But you had to break out your freaking dictionary on me. Okay, whatever. This is really high. Listen, I love Ash and Gen T. But even... Like, even when I loved a run back like Bijan, I wasn't hammering the table for a team in the top 10 to take him. And I'm going to be that way with Ash and Gen T. And I love Ash and Gen T. Came into the year with the top 20 uh, grade on him. Fun fact, it's still going to be there. It's still going to be a top 20, but we're in the top 10. And I know the pendulum started to hit the other way. Having some Having good players in the backfield are starting to matter more. I don't know about the top 10, though. All right, pick eight. Miami Dolphins go with Will Johnson. Okay, this one's interesting. I haven't seen corner for the Dolphins. And I mean, 
To be fair, Cam Smith, he's coming off IR, but I still don't think the Dolphins really like Cam Smith, apparently. Or they don't have enough faith in what he what he has shown thus far. But let's read this one. Johnson was number one on my preseason big board. Me too. He lasts till the eighth pick here only because there was a run on quarterbacks, offensive line, and all-universe athletes, and an all-galaxy running back. Okay, well... Fuller's on a two-year deal. You got Ramsey. And I get Ramsey's flexible. You can play him really anywhere in the defensive backfield. Cater Co uh Co Cater Co Kohu. He's starting to feel like more of an outside corner, which is kind of weird, but you can play both slot and outside. Like, I guess you're just piling up versatile players. I don't mind it. Top guy, he's top guy on the board. I don't mind it. I'm kind of, I'm kind of down with it. Everybody loves the NFL draft, and I know you want to be familiar with every potential prospect that your team may draft. So I got good news for you. My draft guide is available for purchase. It is good throughout the entire draft cycle, and it updates through the season regularly. You'll get my current evals and rankings on hundreds of different players with player backgrounds and analytics. It also contains combine and pro day numbers, as well as my notes from the senior and shrine bowl. You can purchase it for a one-time payment of 30 bucks on PayPal Venmo. And now I have the cash app. Follow the link in the description and be sure to include your email because it is a Google spreadsheet. That is how I share it with you. So please don't make me hunt down your email. Just don't do it. Anywho, it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel. Pick nine, New York Jets take Tetero McMillan, wide receiver out of Arizona. I like this pick much better than uh, I think in our last mock we saw Luther Burden. And that's simply because like he he's just a wide receiver that most NFL rosters just don't have that type of wide receiver on the roster. He's coming in at 6'5". 212 pounds. He's a very smooth mover, very akin to like a Drake London. And you're going to have Mike Williams. He's only on a one-year deal. Alan Lazard. He's kind of whatever. He's like in his second year of his three-year deal. I wonder if you can maybe move on from that. And it, he doesn't really align with what the other guys you have on the roster. So I, kinda, I like the fit here for that. Pick 10, Las Vegas Raiders take Shadur Sanders. Of course they do, man. They need a quarterback. They need a quarterback, Shadur. He goes here. I think uh, he may be one of the few guys you might be willing to plug and play, but even then, I don't necessarily think there's a plug and play guy in this class, and maybe the NFL is starting to move away from that, that whole idea altogether. And maybe they're more willing to let these guys sit on the bench for for a year or at least 10 games, eight games. Uh, well, shoot, Drake May's about to get his first start. We're six weeks into the season. So uh, Godspeed, Drake May. Godspeed. But I like Shadur. He, he's definitely, in terms of pro-ready, more pro-ready than uh, probably any of the other quarterbacks in this class. Pick 11, Arizona Cardinals go with Dion Walker, defensive tackle out of Kentucky. They need defense. I, this, this pick should be defense. Listen, the defense, they're gritty. Cool. That's fun and whatnot. But in terms of talent, the, the ceiling isn't that high. So you need to keep, continue to add parts to that defense. And it should start with the defensive line, in my opinion. Walker could be that guy. Big space eater at 6'6", 345. But very agile mover, too. Pick 12, Indianapolis Colts. They go safety. Malachi Starks out of Georgia. Not a surprise. This is where you put Malachi Starks if you don't know where else to put him in mock drafts. That's just kind of the thing. Oh, man, Malachi Starks is good. Where do I put him? Uh, he, he can't fall out of the top 15, the top 20. Oh, I know the Colts. Colts, they only got Julian Blackman on a one-year deal. Uh, Nick Cross has been okay. <sighs> Rodney Thomas, he, he he's fine-ish. But yeah, that's a good place to put him. I get it. I do mock drafts. I understand. I understand Malachi Starks is hard to place. I understand. All right. We got the uh, San Francisco 49ers going with Benjamin Morrison. Corner out of 
Notre Dame. Corner is an interesting pick for the Niners because you may think of the roster and be like, okay, they don't really need a corner. They just drafted Renardo Green. They got Diamondor Lenoir, fun fact, free agent after this year. A Chavarius Ward, fun fact, free agent after this year. Uh, though they should bring him back. He's hella good. So, like, sneaky corner could be a need even if they don't bring back one of those guys. And Morrison, I think, is well worth the top 15 pick. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Morrison. Uh, I think he would probably be looked at as a as like corner one in this class if guys like uh, Travis Hunter, to be fair, Travis Hunter, not really, a, not completely a corner because, well, we already know. You already know. If you're looking at mock drafts, you probably know why. You know, you know who Travis Hunter is. He's everything. Uh, but also Will Johnson. And I think this is kind of a rare, oh, this is a very good corner class at the top, similar to like your uh, Sauce Gardner, Derek Steenley, uh, Trent McDuffie type of class. Pick 14, the New York football giants go with Quinn Ewers. Okay, Quinn Ewers getting first round love in these last uh, few mock drafts. Uh, I kind of worry that he's a bit of a glass cannon, might miss a couple of games. Like he's never had like a severe injury, but we're going on three years straight of him missing time because of injuries, whether it's one shoulder or the other, whether it's the ab uh, abdominal injury, you worry that he might need to uh, continue to put weight on his frame and try to protect his body more. To be, I mean, to be fair, it's not like injury is the biggest concern with him. Uh, it, it's really just been seeing him play a bit more consistent. And uh, to be fair, we have seen that this year. We have seen that this year, especially downfield. He's been way more consistent. But can he now... Do that for the remainder of the year. We will see him back against Oklahoma, allegedly. Pick 15, the Philadelphia Eagles take Luther Burden, wide receiver, out of Mizzou. And it's a shame Mizzou doesn't force feed Luther Burden the ball. But I love his after-the-catch ability. The Eagles, they've been desperately trying to find a wide receiver three. If you think wide receiver three isn't a need for this team, I beg to differ. I mean, it was a, it was so much of a need that they went out and traded for Jahan Dotson, and he didn't really do anything with guys like Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown out. So, yeah, that's still kind of a need for it, and if it falls in line when it comes to the draft, like, nope, I think they, they will take a shot if, uh, if Burden is still on the board. I think they really will. And, uh, I mean, the people that are saying, oh, the they shouldn't do this. This won't happen. Or the same people that are telling me the Eagles don't draft corner in the first round. Fun fact. It was their corner was their first two picks in the NFL draft last year. So, like, never say never. That's all I'm saying. Never say never. Because guess what? It could change it any given freaking year. Pick 16. Garrett Nuzmeyer. Holy freaking smokes. Garrett Nuzmeyer, quarterback at LSU, go into the Saints here. Derek Carr, his contract runs through 2026, but if the Saints think one of the QBs in this class is worth investing, I'd imagine they draft him. We might get to see Spencer Rattler because uh, currently Derek Carr will be out with an oblique injury. So uh, Nussmeier is interesting. I think he's got a big arm. He's got that gunslinger mentality to him. It's just it, it does lead him to be a little a little a little bit more risque with the football. I do think uh, when he's under pressure, mechanics kind of go out of the window for him. He won't uh, try to set his feet. He's willing to throw off the back foot, has led to some bad throws. Uh, but Nuzmeyer's nice, man. I, I like Nuzmeyer. He was, dude, for the last like couple of years, I've been telling people he is the best backup in college football. And now here he is, man. Now here he is, playing, play, playing honestly good football for the Tigers. Pick 17, Chicago Bears go with Abdul Carter Edge out of Penn State. He's starting to turn it on the last couple of games. The Bears are kind of looking for another edge in there. They have uh, Demarcus Walker. I don't know what his contract looks like, uh, but Walker is a versatile body. So, I mean, that's why they go out, they draft. Um, Oh gosh, uh, Austin Booker, but he he he's kind of a guy you want to develop. Uh, they trade for Daryl Taylor, who's playing good football, but he's more of a rotation player. Uh, they can get out of 
Okay, yeah, yeah, you, you, you could. Yeah, no, you can't get out of Walker's deal until the final year is in 2025. Unless they restructured or something. Like, they're not getting out of that deal. They're just not. Uh, but I do like the idea of going out and getting an uh, edge player. The Bears, they don't have a ton of needs. You would like to see offensive line, probably. But after, like, uh, Will Campbell and uh, Kelvin Banks are off the board, it's like, is there really anyone I really want to take a shot on? Uh, I am after this, after I edit and upload this. Fun fact, I do my Mock the Mocks on Wednesday. And then the remainder of Wednesday and some parts of Thursday, uh, I'm grinding through the tape and watching evals. I will be watching the Texas offensive line so I can get uh, an eval out there for you on Cameron Williams. So, ha, 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 ha. I know you're watching this video Friday. Just telling y'all. By then, my draft guide, which, hey, I already had the ad promo for it. Check it out. I will have an eval for Cameron Williams. Is he a first rounder? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> All right, we got uh, the Green Bay Packers going with Ariante Urshi, offensive uh, lineman. He's being listed as offensive lineman out of Minnesota. The Packers drafted an offensive lineman in Jordan Morgan in round one last spring. Urshi, who plays left tackle for the Gophers, is a mammoth in size but moves extremely well. He'll pancake you into the turf, but also gets into space and throw you into the bleachers. He gives the Packers more options up front, especially with Zach Tom's deal currently set to expire after 2025. That's fairly interesting. I think I would go corner. I think I would. Because now you're starting to look at that next tier of corner and you're like, who's going to take the first shot? If I'm the Packers, I kind of want to take that first shot. Uh... I feel like the offensive line is good, dude. Like, Sean Ryan has stepped up and looked solid this year with uh, Jordan Morgan being plagued by a shoulder injury. And, I mean, Morgan has the flexibility to play tackle. So, if, like, Zach Tom or uh, Rasheed Walker go down, you have that flexibility. So, I don't know, man. I'm not – I don't think I'm on the Packers. I want to go with, go with offensive line in the first round two years in a row just yet. Pick 19, the Chargers. They go with Kenneth Grant, defensive interior out of Michigan. You get to reunite him and Jim Harbaugh. Isn't that beautiful? But I, I do think the I do think Harbaugh and Jesse Minter would love to like stack this defensive interior. Right now it's Puna Ford and Friends outside of Ford. No one's really playing that well on the interior. Grant, you're already familiar with them. You can plug them right into the system. Pittsburgh Steelers, they go with Siobhan Revel Jr. out of East Carolina. He is coming off the ACL towards ACL just last month. Will likely miss the offseason draft process. Don't think he's going to be able to run. Uh, definitely won't be able to participate in a uh, all-star bowl. But he was someone definitely trending in the direction of first-round talent. Now that probably kicks him to day two. Uh, but corner's interesting. They have Joey Porter. I think Dante Jackson's deal is up after this season. I think that was the whole thing where uh, you trade Deontay Jackson and um, Deontay Johnson. And they're both kind of in the last years of their current deals. And I think that was kind of the idea behind the trade. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he is he will be a free agent after this season. So yeah, corner could be definitely uh in the cards for the Steelers. Pick 21, Seattle Seahawks. They take Emory Jones offensive tackle. They're listing him as a tackle at a LSU. Again, you don't know what's going on. Like Abraham Lucas, will he ever be healthy again? Stone Forsyth, not that good. And even if even if he doesn't end up playing right tackle, Emory Jones, you could slot him into one of the guard spots. He might project better as a guard than a tackle in the NFL. Offensive line probably should be the call for the Seahawks. Pick 22, Denver Broncos go with Colston Loveland, tight end out of Michigan. This is a pick that I think I highlighted uh, a week or so ago that uh, trying to find different spots for Loveland because I do think he probably ends up uh, being a first-round player, but 
I ooh, I I kind of I I like I like the idea of this. I mean, I bet you Sean Payton would love to get him his hands on someone similar to like a Jimmy Graham. Uh, get Bo Nix some more receiving weapons, more pass catching weapons. So that's definitely in the cards. Uh, I think if this was maybe a better offensive line class in the first round, maybe we see them go with that because Mike McGlinchey, he's expensive and he's hurt. You got Garrett Bowles. He's in the final year of his deal. Tackle does make a lot of sense as well for the uh, the Broncos, not the Bucks. Dallas Cowboys at pick 23 go with Nick Scorton. Edge out of uh, Texas A&M. Well, a lot of people are going edge for the Cowboys, man. And it's like, they're go- I can't imagine them not bringing back Micah Parsons. I get it. Demarcus Lawrence, you're probably going to want to eventually move on. He's getting up there in years. He's still playing good football, but now he's beat up. But Marshawn Nealon's kind of supposed to be that guy. You still have Sam Williams on contract. I know that there's been a little, uh, little um, let's call it, little interest of, or a little, little conflict of interest there with him but if anything you're feeling like maybe the interior but i don't know maybe you've really liked mozzie smith the last couple of games maybe you think he's turning a corner uh the the, the cowboys are going to be a very fascinating team over the off season because like mike mccarthy is he going to be brought back his contract is up uh mike zimmer is he going to be brought back he's only on a one-year deal you got to figure out what's going on with micah parsons so they're going to be fascinating all right, we got pick uh, 24. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers go with Mikel Williams Edge out of Georgia. Toolsy guy, freak athlete. Just need to see more consistency uh, from him. Unfortunately, started the year banged up with high ankle sprain. I think it was a high ankle sprain. Again, college. Uh, colleges like to sometimes keep injuries close to the vest, uh, and we don't hear so much about it, about what it is specifically. Uh, but no, yeah, the Bucks would love to get an edge opposite of Yaya Diaby, who is breaking out this year, by the way. Buffalo Bills, they go with Emeka Ibuka. Wide receiver out of Ohio State. I get you want to get more wide receivers. You're probably looking for a wide receiver one type. I don't know if Ibuka could be that. I mean, maybe, maybe it ends up being like an Amon Ross St. Brown, but even then he's going to be functioning more out of the slot than he is outside but then you could argue you got Khalil Shakir who could play outside Keon Coleman definitely is playing outside so it's a fascinating thought I mean yeah I could be down for that Baltimore Ravens they go with Josh Simmons offensive lineman out of Ohio State we're going to read this one I'm going to get back to Josh Simmons this weekend with the Oregon game that's going to be a big indicator of where he moves on my board. I think I had him as like a second, third round pick. And I mean, dude, this draft, this currently this draft class is desperate for, for tackles to move up. Because I I don't think there's many, there's not going to be a lot of guys with first round grades on him. That's just kind of what this class is. But let's read this one real quick. Uh, one of the biggest issues facing the Ravens early in the season was the inconsistency along the offensive line. Part of that is due to youth and inexperience, and that unit will improve, but both Ronnie Stanley and Patrick McCarry are in the final years of their current contracts. Fascinating. Yeah, I could be down for this, man. I've, I've heard good things. Uh, Trevor Sigma has been praising a lot of Josh Simmons, too. And I mean, I do. I'm a sucker for a guy who was playing at San Diego State, was balling out. It was like, I'm going to the Power Five and balled out last year for Ohio State. Uh, Atlanta Falcons, they go with James Pierce Jr. Edge out of Tennessee. I'm, I'm kind of shocked he didn't go a little bit earlier, but yeah, Falcons would love Edge. Currently, they're getting no pass rush from their Edge players uh, outside of like Judon, but even then, Judon feels. He's a little bit older, maybe more of an edge too at this juncture in his career. So, yeah, that's a good pick. I mean, elite explosiveness, just a guy that still needs to put his game together. Detroit Lions, they're going to go with Jack Sawyer, offensive, or uh, excuse me, edge player out of Ohio State. And straight up, man, I, I, I like this pick. He feels like a Dan Campbell guy. Sawyer's kind of playing really good football right now, and I get it. 
He is not going to, he's not the most twitchy or not the strongest, not the most explosive uh, player, but he's just like, he gets business done. He, he gets business done. And I'm a big fan of that. All right. Washington Commanders at pick 29 go with Denzel Burke, corner at Ohio State. And I, I, I get it. I, I, I get it. Someone complained because I had Burke go to the Commanders in my last mock draft, I think. Yeah, I did. And complained, oh, Burke's not a good scheme fit for Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn likes big, meaty corners, big, long, meaty corners. Sounds all kinds of dirty. And I'm like, yeah, like Deron Bland, who was 6'1", 196. Denzel Burke, 6'1", 193. Yeah, okay, miss me with that. It's all about how they're playing. Sometimes, I get it. Some teams have thresholds when it comes to, like, length, size, uh, testing, and whatnot. But sometimes it's just how they play, like the physicality. And Denzel Burke's a very physical corner, uh, both against the run and during the, uh, during the route. And I think he'd be a good fit. Like... Uh, a lot of people look at Burke and be like, oh, he'd be great as a press man, but he can make it in um, Dan Quinn's cover three. I know Dan Quinn occasionally likes to run the Tampa two and such, but like just because like you profile Burke as a press man corner doesn't mean, oh, yeah, it must he, he must be balls. He must be just trash at uh, like zone coverage. No, that's not the case. That's not the case. It's just pre like press man corners are kind of rare. In the NFL. It's rare to find that guy that you can ask to play on an island. Just is. Uh, Houston Texans go with TJ Sanders. Defensive interior out of South Carolina. He's having a great year. Sanders, uh, the man can really, really get after it. The Texans, I think uh, defensive interior, you definitely want to increase the, the, the talent along the interior. While they got guys that are playing relatively all right. I think you do want to increase that threshold of talent along the interior. Uh, and Sanders would do that. Kansas City Chiefs, they're going to go with Harold uh, Perkins Jr., linebacker out of LSU. Now, this is a problem. Man. He's a bit of a tweener because he's a really good pass rusher, but you're not going to do that full-time in the NFL at 6'1", 225. And I think he's shown enough as like an off-ball linebacker to where it's like, oh, yeah, okay, he's got tools worth investing in. After the injury, I don't think he's – he might return. After the injury, I don't think you could consider him a first-rounder just yet, especially considering he's a bit of a tweener. There's just too many questions when it comes to Kansas – or when it comes to Harold Perkins. And, I mean, they, they got a lot of talent at linebacker, the Chiefs, whether it's Drew Tranquil, they really like him. Nick Bolton, I get it. He's on the final year of his deal. But you also got like Leo Chanel and such. So it's like, I'm not too worried about it. And then, oh man, who would have thought? I didn't know that this was a mock draft with trades. Feels like it's a little early to start doing trades. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but the Jets trade up with the Minnesota Vikings to take Carson Beck. Uh, a bit lackluster. Listen, Beck, I thought he was one of, I still believe he's one of these more high floor players. Uh, it, it's just that, again, he doesn't have, like, the biggest arm. You're kind of banking him on, on him to be uh, pinpoint accurate, uh, which that's kind of come and gone this year. I think I think he's shown that, yeah, no, he he's still, like, the ball plays are still relatively good. It's just the chemistry right now is just off with him and his receivers. Uh, and now he lost uh, Kobe Young because he's a terrible person, potentially, allegedly. But, uh also with Beck, it's like went under pressure. This was something. It was like he wasn't under pressure much last year, but what he was, his that accuracy dramatically dropped. The poise wasn't nearly as good, and I feel like we've seen that this this year with him. Whether it was against Kentucky, whether it was that first half of the Alabama game, I like him better on day two. I really, really like him better on day two. I don't even know like if I take him in the top 50 at this juncture just cuz again I feel I feel like 
he just doesn't have those tools that make you go, oh, <laughs> literally, that sound exactly. But that's just my take. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Again, special shout out to BetUS. Thank you for powering today's video. Go to BetUS right now and sign up with promo code YouTube150, and they will give you 150% signing bonus on your first deposit up to $2,000. But those next two deposits will get a signing bonus of $200. 200 haha -ha. the deal's not that ludicrous but 125 percent uh sign bonus and again that will be up to two thousand dollars but as always until next time you be easy my friends later